Whenever you see water flowing or the wind blowing, there is a set of equations which governs the movement of these fluids. This set of equations is called the Navier-Stokes equations. What does the Navier-Stokes equations represent exactly? Where do they come from? And why are they so crucial to modern civilization? On this video, I will talk briefly about the history of the Navier-Stokes equations and its importance. The history of the Navier-Stokes equations can be considered to have begun in the 17th century, most precisely on the year 1687. On this year, Isaac Newton published his most important work named Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, which had a huge impact on physics and most particularly mechanics, which is a branch of physics that studies the movement of bodies. This work established the foundation of mechanics as we know today, such as the Newton's three laws of motion. The first law, which states that every object in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless external force acts on it, which is also known as Galileo law of inertia. The second law, the sum of forces acting on a body equals mass times acceleration. The third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposed reaction. Apart from mechanics, Newton made several other major contributions to physics and mathematics. Working independently, he and Gottfried Leibniz developed a set of mathematical tools that we know today as infinitesimal calculus or simply calculus. With the development of calculus, Many problems were solved in the frame of ideal fluid or inviscid fluid, which is known as a fluid without viscosity. In 1738, Bernoulli proved that the gradient of pressure is proportional to the acceleration of a fluid. Later, Euler derived the famous differential equations, known as Euler's equations, which closely resemble the Navier-Stokes equations. However, the action of viscosity was not considered on these equations, providing unrealistic results. In 1758, D'Alembert proved that the drag on a body of any shape moving through a fluid with no viscosity is zero, which is known as D'Alembert's paradox. This result was obviously in contradiction to the abundance of evidence of the real world. Hence, the mathematical fluid mechanics and engineering hydrodynamics were developed into separate branches. However, in the 19th century, research in fluid mechanics was focused on trying to add a friction term in Euler's equations in order to obtain realistic results. In 1822, Claude-Louis Navier made the first known derivation of the Navier-Stokes equations by incorporating an extra term to the Euler's equations in order to represent friction based on a molecular mechanism. Other scientists such as Cauchy in 1828 Poisson in 1829 and Saint-Venin in 1843 published studies considering this mechanism. However, it is attributed to George Stokes in 1845 to have made the first mathematically rigorous derivation of the Navier-Stokes equations. From the Euler's equations up to today, different scientists wrote Navier-Stokes equations in many forms. It is Ludwig Brandt in 1934 who wrote the Navier-Stokes equations in the form that is most widely used today. Solutions to the Navier-Stokes equations are used in many practical applications. However, theoretical understanding of the solutions to these equations is incomplete. In particular, solutions of the Navier-Stokes equations often include turbulence, which remains one of the greatest unsolved problems in physics. Even more basic properties of the solutions to Navier-Stokes equations have never been proven. Mathematicians have not yet proved that solutions always exist, or that if they do exist, they have bounded energy, which means that they don't blow up. This is called the Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness problem. In 2000, 
The Clay Mathematics Institute made this problem one of the seven millennium prize problems, offering a $1 million prize to the first person providing a solution. There are, however, some partial results regarding the mathematical behavior from these equations. The mathematician John R. Ray proved, in 1934, the existence of the so-called weak solutions of the Navier-Stokes equations. More recently, a northern mathematician named Terence Tao published in 2017 a finite time blow-up result from an average version of the three-dimensional Navier-Stokes equations. The Navier-Stokes equations are very useful because they describe the physics of many phenomena of scientific and engineering interest. They can be used to model ocean currents, weather conditions, water flow in a pipe, design of aircraft and cars, study of blood flow, design of hydropower stations, analysis of pollution, and many other things. It can be said that the applications on Navier Stokes are most everywhere in our life today. I really hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with others. See you on the next video.